We're talking Marvel. We're talking villains. We're talking back issues. And it starts right now. What's going on, guys? It's Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics. Here, where we are helping to amplify your comic book collection through integrity and community. We do a lot of comic and pop culture content on this channel. So if this is your first time here, consider subscribing. So here we are talking about five modern Marvel back issues dealing with villains. And the first one we're going to talk about is Death of the Inhumans number one. This has a pretty big first appearance in it, doesn't it, Jack? Definitely. This is the first appearance of Vox. Um, a character who kind of had some heat upon debuting. Of course, this is a Donny Cates book, Donny Cates property. Um, there was a lot of controversy surrounding the design of this character with a lot like kind of that Earth X character. But we've had it said multiple times by Donny Cates. This is an original character. Definitely looks like he borrowed from some design work. But this character in the series didn't really take off. Death of Inhumans was not popular. It seems like nothing surrounding Inhumans has been able to take off. But this character has seen a resurgence in the last couple of months due to the Captain Marvel storyline bringing Vox in as kind of the main villain um, under the name Vox Supreme. And they've even made reference in the pages of the book to this being the character from uh, Death of Inhumans. So Death of Inhumans number one has seen spikes to about $10. The variant going for about $25 in the design variant, that is. But here's the thing. This is a book I find in bins all the time. We love to highlight books found in bins. Now, there's going to be some expensive books on this week's list, but this is one you can find out there because it was dollar bin fodder for a while. And at number four, we get Avengers number 679, and this is another first appearance in this comic, right? Yeah, this is the first appearance of Challenger. We first heard his voice in 676, and this is from that Avengers No Surrender run that Brian and I have talked about several times on the channel. There were a lot of great first appearances in this run, from Voyager to Immortal Hulk. But this Challenger appearance is one. And this is a character that's kind of hard to put in the category of a villain, because he kind of, like, is on the fence. He's not necessarily inherently evil, but he's done battle with the Avengers several times. He's a character who's kind of eternal. He's one of the oldest characters in the universe. He's one of those characters who he is the last of his kind. And these characters, they kind of, they pass this, large amount of time by kind of like a hobby challenger being what his name is games kind of uh um these challenges are what uh you know he uses to pass the time and he is the one who was really responsible for unleashing immortal hulk on the avengers so i think as immortal hulk goes if we ever see an mcu property involving immortal hulk i have no doubt we will see challenger and Another book with this to be on the lookout for is that second print where he is on the cover. Then coming in at number three, we get X-Men Legacy number 214. Yeah, this is the first appearance of Miss Sinister. Um, you know, this has been a book that has seen kind of rise and fall several times on the secondary market. Um, it was a dollar bin book for a long time. Got kind of hot and popular when Miss Sinister showed up again. Um, there was some speculation around the character. It became a ten to fifteen dollar book, and then it kind of fell off again. And then with House of X, Powers of Ten, we saw every kind of older uh, X character be used and kind of rise again in popularity. And again, this book is hot again. It's being talked about. It's being paid attention to. And you know, we haven't really gotten a Mister Sinister in movie form yet. That's really done justice. But we had kind of a, a little tease in a post-credits trailer. But we haven't gotten a, a Mr. Sinister yet. So it's kind of hard to know whether or not Miss Sinister has any really long-term value. But we also know these movies love having female protagonists and antagonists. So at the price that these go for, it's one to kind of keep an eye out for. Because this is another book you can oftentimes find in dollar bins. And at our number two spot, this is a book that a lot of people are well aware of. And it's also a book that's kind of been risen in price and for good reason. But we're talking about Venom number three. And we're talking about that first appearance of Null. Yeah, we're done with the dollar bin books now, Brian. Because Null has been one of the hottest characters on the secondary market. 
And you know what? It seems like, just like in pro wrestling, where the heels kind of have that cult popularity, within the comics industry, we're starting to see villains get that kind of attention and popularity. We've also talked, you and I, on the channel about the fact that it's kind of easier these days to create a villain, right? It, just like in pro wrestling, it's harder to be a babyface and make everybody like you. It's really difficult to create a hero that can stand up to Captain America and Tony Stark and uh, Captain Marvel and these iconic characters. And it's easier to create somebody to combat that. And there are also a lot of characters who don't have that arch nemesis. And one of those such characters is Venom. Venom was kind of a, a, a villain himself upon creation. So it was important within Donny Cates' run to kind of add on to, to the lore. We've seen Null show up in Silver Surfer Black. Um, it looks like Null is here to stay. He may play into Thor in Donny Cates' future run. There's kind of a tie-in, natural tie-in with that God of Thunder run. And I think that Null is a character that's here to stay. But if you're looking for a good long-term uh, purchase and you don't want to spend money on that first print, be on the lookout for those second prints, third prints, fourth prints, that PX exclusive. These books all go for a lot less than that first print does, and I think they have a lot of room to grow going forward. And at number one, which I love this, of course, but we are talking about a Thor book, so of course I love it, but we're talking about one of the favorite villains, especially coming out of that Jason Aaron run, and we're talking about Gore the God Butcher in Thor number two. Yeah, and I mean, this is a book that has seen meteoric rises over the last year. Maybe the back issue of 2019, um, if you really look at like an issue that was, again, a dollar bin book at the end of 2018, um, has now become a serious back issue on the market. Again, another book that's going to be tough to find in bins these days, but one that has kind of unlimited possibilities. There's been rumors about Gore being the villain in a future Thor movie. I think that's absolutely possible. Either way, I think this is a character who Donnie Cates could touch on. Um, this is a character we could see kind of go beyond just the Thor series. Um, this is a character that it seems like Marvel is going to get behind in a big, big way. So this is a book to check out. And the great thing about this book is there's only one cover. And, and for the long-term value of a book, that is kind of one of the keys. Um, there, you know, there, It's not a book where you're going to see a whole bunch of late printings. There's just the regular cover and then a variant. So there it is, guys. Those are five modern Marvel villain back issues to be on the lookout for. We're always doing back issue videos on this channel. Let us know in the comments. Do you have any of these books? Also, let us know. Is there any back issue topic that you'd like us to cover on this channel as well? This is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you click that bell to so get notified when future videos drop. And with that being said, we'll see you in the next video.